All right. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is DJ. I work on the vector unit at Tenstore, and I had a, the chance to work with my colleagues, Anton, Chep, uh, playing with uh, the vector unit we, we built. And today I want to share some of our experience, experience with you. Uh, I'm going to fly over a lot of uh, hot topics about uh, vector programming. And uh, I will spend most of my time on some of the case studies. Uh, if you miss any details, uh, you should be able to find a copy of the slides online. Okay, let's get started. Um, so in this experiment, uh, I pick two designs um, that I have my hands with, uh, the space time uh, K1, and also the ASCON design from Tenstorm. And uh, this uh, ASCON design is uh, out of order with a, a VLAN of 256, uh, where we have uh, two pipes of a vector pipe with a DLAN of 256 as well. So, we think this is a comparable design, although the performance uh, doesn't really matter. Um, so the first topic is uh, strip mining. Uh, this is a very hot and debatable topics. I think what we learned is people are trying pretty hard to avoid doing this. Uh, this is uh, probably because uh, the hardware uh, may not have a specific optimization. So uh, handling the VSAT, uh, basically rename the V-type, so which add additional penalty if you put the VSAT instructions in, uh, inside the inner loop. And also uh, people may choose to use a more area efficient implementation for complex instructions. For example, uh, the segment store and uh, uh, permutation instructions. Uh, but on the other hand, a typical out of order processor tends to have more area power budget. Uh, so it will choose to have hardware solution for strict mining. Another topic is uh, auto vectorization. Um, this is uh, another topic that people have uh, a lot of debate. I think. Uh, a lot of programmers choose to stick, stick to the SIMD style of uh, programming by using intrinsics with the inline assemblies, which are, is pretty hard to do. And also it makes the code not uh, easy to be ported. Uh, on our side, uh, we, have, we actually observed uh, the auto vectorization from the latest GCC actually help out on improving the spec in 2006 scores. Uh, here's a few examples of uh, how to implement some of the functions with the uh, complex instructions like a segment load stores, V compress, VR gather. Um, of course, you can, you can choose to use a different um, implementation to substitute those complex instructions. It really depends on the cost uh, function, uh, which I will show some data points to explain what is uh, uh, the, how, how to make the, de the decision uh, between choosing whether to use a complex vector instruction or not. So in summary, um, when you are writing the vector code, uh, please consider both targets. The out of order processor are become available. They, uh, they enable techniques that were not practical before. Something like a strip mining works well. Complex, complex instruction like a segment low stores are okay to use. Uh, auto vectorization can help. And also the small Elmo is just perfectly fine to use. Here we go. So the first uh, case is very interesting. Uh, there is a pull request from OpenBlast that the author decided to avoid using strict mining by um, eliminating using the Visa VL. And also it has a, a handful of techniques is thrown at it 
by reducing the vector instruction, using larger ELMO, doing the loop line rolling on the hardware and software side, and it just makes the code very complicated. Um, and it actually turns out uh, it makes the performance even worse. Uh, so something that is not showing on this chart, uh, if you look at the, the orange bar on the right, uh, the value is actually 1500. Uh, it's off the chart. Uh, so <laughs> it, it actually shows that even on an in-order processor, uh, not using strict mining actually hard performance by like 10x. Uh, on the other hand, um, the out of order processor handles both code just fine. Um, it actually preferred the strict mining version uh, because uh, it has uh, less uh, register pressure and it's using the vector engine more efficiently. Uh, this is uh, some data points we collected from RVV Bench, and uh, we further processed this by mapping it into this table. Uh, one thing to point out is uh, the Y axis in, is in the log of two, and uh, we also normalize this uh, per element. So this way you can see what's the cost for using uh, either the vector instructions or using an alternative instruction. For example, this is a table lookup function where you could either use the index load to look it up from the memory, or you can load the entire table into your vector register and using the VR gather to look it up. And uh, this graph is showing that uh, um, on the in-order side, this is uh, sort of linear, which means uh, the cost of uh, doing the lookup for one element actually become slower um, versus uh, just doing a simple index load when the ELMO uh, exceeds two. And so this is a one way you can determine uh, whether you want to use a VR gather uh, for this application for a particular hardware or not. Here's another example focused on vCompress. And uh, similarly, uh, you can see the performance is better, but still when uh, the ELMO is uh, be beyond four, uh, it's actually better if you just do a VIUTA plus uh, index store. Uh, this is uh, one of the example of uh, using segment store um, because uh, currently we don't have the zip instruction uh, extension available. This become a very uh, interesting instruction to uh, to perform a zip like uh, function. And over here, uh, the interesting finding we had uh, it's. Uh, uh, it seems like the in-order design uh, really just fall back to the scalar method where it takes five cycles to perform one five field segment store. It's really just doing one by one. And uh, here is an example of uh, uh, using factor instructions to do matrix transpose. Uh, this uh, this benchmark is extended from the RVV examples where I um, added a new method, which is uh, colored in yellow, uh, which is using the segmented strided load to do multiple columns of uh, uh, the matrix read in, uh, together, and then use the vector engine to do the transpose. And later on, you can use a unit stress store to store them back uh, to the transposed version of the matrix efficiently. And over here, you can see on both sides, uh, the new method is actually performing, it's the best performance. But um, despite the two designs have a relatively similar capability, vector capability, uh, the out of water one shows an even better speed up uh, I think this has something to do with uh, uh, really the cost function of uh, uh, the segment load instruction. And here is an example of how um, we are 
leveraging the vector unit to speed up our spec end in performance, where we observe uh, performance improvement um, with the vectorized libc and also using the latest version of the GCC auto vectorization. And of course, uh, the best benchmark uh, is Doom. And uh, in this uh, uh, application, we extended FB Doom uh, with the RVV support. And uh, uh, we're using the VR gather for the color map indexing. And we use a segment store for the scaling. And uh, by just staring at the, the raw number, um, the out of water design is uh, uh, improving the frame rate per second by like five x comparing to the scalar design. And if we compare the out of water vector vectorized uh, performance versus the in water one, uh, is almost another five x and. Um, Despite the the vector data pass, it's only two. Uh, the difference is only two x. So it shows that the out of water uh, vector engine is more efficient by running uh, the vectorized code. And uh, that's the end. Uh, any questions? Thank you. The uh, catastrophic case where the the number was off the charts. I mean, there, there, there was. Some performance, but not that one. The yeah, the first one. Right? That one. Yeah. I mean, that 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 seems to be a performance bug or something. It's not yeah. no. So what what exactly was wrong? I mean, this this is not the machine is bad. There's something wrong. Yeah, with the, the code. code is bad. Yeah. Yeah, the authors uh, tried to eliminate the uh, set VLs and uh, the strip mining out of there. So they they created some really complicated code. And they decided to go with very large L malts. And uh, one of the mistakes they overlooked is that they had too many registers in play and caused register spillage, which is a lot, a lot of the dif differences. Um, but um, with the simpler uh, strip mining uh, s solution, uh, you, you can use uh, smaller L malts and speed it up even, even further. But you, you think the biggest performance impact was the spillage? Probably half half the uh, performance uh, gain was the spillage. Thank you. It, it was just a case study of what not to do. There's a gentleman over there. Hi. Uh, so the most of the examples that you provided, right, for the complex instructions or the auto vectorization, it's independent of the in order versus out of order per se, right? It applies to both equally. It's more like the micro architecture implementation for the instruction that determines the performance instead of in order or out of order. Um, right. Yes, the complex instructions uh, are very in, uh, hard to implement. Uh, so far, I only have my hands on really banana pie, and uh, I can sort of sense that uh, uh, they didn't try very hard, or maybe this is due to they have a limited um, area budget, so they may not commit to do a high performance implementation. Yeah, I mean, it's the instruction implementation that is low performance rather than whether it's in order or out. Uh, it, there are some microarchitectural choices you can make. For example, if you want to do segment low stores very efficiently, uh, I think a traditional implementation is you have a scratch pad, and then you just load all the data into that uh, um, like a temp space, and then have some logic to do the transpose. Uh, the challenge is, uh, the capacity of that scratch pad. And if you want to hide enough of the load or store latency, that means uh, you need to invest a lot of area to get a very, very big scratch pad to handle the worst case scenario, which likely you have uh, like eight field of a segment with a size of 64 each. And uh, 
if you want to support multiple outstanding uh, segment load, then now you have to support, you know, have enough of the capacity to handle all the outstanding loads. And this uh, can be very expensive uh, for a typical in-order design where they are focused more on the area efficiency. Yeah, thanks. Um, it seems like the out of order core is just more powerful than the in order core in this situation. I'm curious how you attribute the performance boost to being out of order instead of it just being a more powerful core. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't, um, I think uh, the, the mindset of designing out of order is so you already have your mindset set to a certain performance. And uh, so the, Really, the thing is, uh, for all of order CPU, you already have a very powerful scalar capability. And in order to encourage the, the software to use the vector instructions, you need to be even better. So it's a race, and we need to really put all our best to make the vector run as fast as possible. In maybe your second or third to last slides, you you showed some comparisons where I think the scale there was a scalar code which was 4.2x better, and then there was a vector version which was like 4.8. There you go, 4.9x. So I'm sort of maybe it's similar to the last question. You know, you're comparing a dual issue in order with an eight issue out of order, and I get that they're different, but you know. Most people wouldn't expect literally 4x better. And for scalar code, you're showing 4.2x. And for vector, even though the difference is single issue vector versus dual issue vector, it's actually 4.9x better. Can you, how can that be? <laughs> I, um, I, I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, so, the, the thing is, uh, the, the, so this uh, kind of like goes back to this uh, charts. So even if uh, we're running the same vector binaries, uh, the performance between the in order and the out of order for those specific instructions can be like, in this case, it's a 5x difference by running segment store. And similarly, there's a VR gather, and you can see when, uh, when you have a very big ELMO, there's a 8x difference in terms of a half, you know, how fast in order design run the same vector instructions. So it's uh, so this is uh, really showing that uh, when you measure the difference between two designs, you cannot just compare the the VLAN or DLAN. Uh, there's you need to factor in what is the real really CPI or in this case is a CPE uh, cycle per element performances. Thank you. <laughs> 